wonderful. And at this time, it's time for the word of God. And praise God. We're grateful for our man servant who's going to be speaking to us here today. Uh, no other than our minister, Clint Brown. Amen. Just receive him as he comes with the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we praise the Lord one more time? He is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be exalted. He's worthy to be lifted up. God, we honor you this morning. We give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Just give someone next to you a hug. Amen. Hallelujah. And just tell them I love you with the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Precious Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. See, love is contagious. Amen. Hallelujah. As we return back to our seats, amen. Bless me in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's, that's what a good hug does. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that God loves when we're happy. Amen. Hallelujah. He loves when we have a joy. Amen. Bless me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Giving honor to God who's the head of my life and also to our pastor, Amen. Dr. Gabriel Austin, God bless you, man of God. Amen. And to our first lady, Dr. Minister Catherine Austin, God bless you. Woman of God, amen. And even to our co-founder, amen. We give God thanks for her this morning. Amen. I know she's praying for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Remembering the legacy of our bishop. Amen. We can give God praise. Hallelujah. Bless be the name of Jesus. Also to our minister, Duane Austin, God bless you. Man of God, our minister elect, Dr. Christopher Witt. God bless you, man of God. Amen. Hallelujah to, amen, our missionary Stevenson. Amen. To the household of faith. Amen. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming king. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Our uh, text will be taken this morning from the Gospel of Luke. Amen. Chapter 10. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And we're going to read from verse 25 to verse 37. Amen. Luke chapter 10, from verse 25 to verse 37. And when you have it, uh, you can indicate uh, by standing on your feet. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 10, we're going to read from verse 25 to verse 37. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. When you have it, you can kindly stand on your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to read as a family. I'll read verse 25 and congregation verse 26 and we go so on uh, to verse 37. If you found it, let me hear you say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Reading God's word. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he, answered in, and he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. But he willing to justify himself said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, the Levi, and when he was at the place, came and looked at him, and passed by on the other side. 
But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Let's read verse 37 together. And he said, He that hath showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thy likewise. Amen. The reading of God's word is blessed. Father, we thank you, O Lord. I pray, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Father, Lord, we pray this morning, O Lord, that your word, O God, as it goes forth, that it would touch the minds and heart of your people this morning, O God, that we can hear what it is that you are speaking unto your body, the church, and no other name but in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And I would just like to share using as my topic this morning, General Hospital. General Hospital. Amen. I see a few people smiling. Amen. And uh, we have some soap opera fans here. Yes. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. The Gospel of Luke bears its author's name. Luke was a Gentile, meaning non-Jew, close friend of Paul, who Paul called in the book of Colossians the beloved physician. Through his style of writing and chronological order of details, we can see his passion for research and detailed accounts. When we visit a doctor today, what are some things that the doctor asks us first? They ask for our history, amen? In the same manner, Luke begins the writing of his gospel by telling us about Zachariah and Elizabeth, Mary's cousin who would conceive John the Baptist, and he was doing so to show the family of Jesus, amen? amen. Dr. Luke never personally met Jesus, but there was no denying that by the inspiration seen in his writing, that he had a personal relationship with him. Anyone else have a personal relationship with the Lord? Amen. Not only did Luke write the gospel that bears his name, but he was also privileged and inspired by God to write the book of Acts. Luke's writing focuses on the preaching of the good news. And what is the good news? The gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Luke gives us this account of the parable of the Good Samaritan an encounter that Jesus had with an expert of the Mosaic law, the Old Testament law. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. So in verse 25, we see a question posed to Jesus, and this question was posed in a form of a test, to test Jesus. And the lawyer's question was, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life. This question provided Jesus with an opportunity to define what uh, to his disciples what their relationship should be to their neighbors. The text says that the scribe, the lawyer, had put the question to Jesus as a test. The wording of the question does, however, give us some insight into what the scribe's heart was, where, where it was spiritually. He was making the assumption that man must do something in order to obtain eternal life. But Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 says, But we have all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So in other words, there is nothing that we can do by our own way to make our way into heaven. Amen? But John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Someone say, the way is Jesus. 
Although this could have been an opportunity for Jesus to discuss salvation, he chose a different course and focuses on our relationships and what it means to love. Tell somebody, I know what it means to love. Jesus answers the question using what is called the Socrate method. And this is answering a question with a question. He said unto him, what is written in the law? What is your reading? What is your interpretation of it? So in other words, the lawyer asked Jesus the question, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, what is written in the law? You tell me, what is your interpretation of what is written? And I'm really uh, appreciating this word of God because it's sharpening even my own skills. Amen for the career that amen I'm going into. I thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. By referring to the law, Jesus is directing the man to an authority they both would accept as truth, and that is the Old Testament. In essence, he was asking the scribe, what does the scripture say about this, and how do you interpret it? Jesus thus avoids an argument and puts himself in the position of evaluating the scribe's answer instead of the scribe evaluating his answer. This directs the discussion towards Jesus' intended lesson. What I know about everyone that encountered Jesus, they were astonished by his words. Amen? It was something about the way he spoke, and it touched the hearts of man, and it pricked people some a good way and some a bad way. Amen? Hallelujah. The, scribes answer, uh, the scribe answers Jesus' question by quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, which says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. He also quotes Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, which says, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. In verse 28, Jesus affirms, that the lawyer's answer is correct. Jesus' reply tells the scribe that he has given the scripturally proper answer. But then he goes on in verse 28 to tell him that this kind of love requires more than an emotional feeling. It must also include faithful practice. Someone say faithful practice. He would need to, in other words, practice what he's preaching. Amen, somebody. Amen. It is interesting that Jesus tells us in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. This suggests to us that love is more than just an emotional word, but is in a word that requires action. Amen. Amen. The scribe was an educated man and realized that he could not possibly keep that law nor would he have necessarily wanted to. Let me tell you why. There would always be people in his life that he could not love. Thus, he tries to limit the Lord's command by limiting the parameters and asks the question then, who is my neighbor? Amen? I want you to tell somebody, like a good neighbor, I am here. Amen, somebody. Tell somebody again, like a good neighbor, I am here. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. The word neighbor in the Greek means someone who is near. Are you near to anybody right now? And in the Hebrew, it means someone that you have an association with. This interprets the word in a limited sense, referring to a fellow Jew that would have excluded Samaritans, Romans, and other foreigners. Jesus then gives the parable of the Good Samaritan to correct this false understanding that the scribe had of who his neighbor is and what his duty is towards his neighbor. Someone say praise the Lord. Praise the parable of the Good Samaritan tells us a story about a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And while on the way he was robbed of everything he had, including his clothing, and he is beaten within an inch of his life. Biblical research tells us that this road was treacherously bad. 
and was a favorite hideout of robbers and thieves. Somebody saying that sounds like some areas in Brooklyn. That sounds like some areas in Queens, amen. That we wouldn't even pass even in the daytime, amen. Bless be the name of Jesus. The first century road was approximately 150 Roman shadowi, or about 18 miles long. A traveler descended from Jerusalem's height, approximately 2,500 feet above sea level, and while they were traveling to Jericho's depth, some 825 feet below sea level. Why am I saying this? Such a dramatic change in height brought with a, 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 a rapid shift in environment condition would be exhausting to someone. Isn't that like the enemy? He waits till we're exhausted to try to hit us again. Can I talk to somebody? It's almost like he waits till we're in a weakened condition and then he tries to take advantage of us. But I'm thankful to know that we have a present help. Ah, in time of trouble. I'm thankful to know that even when we're in that valley state that we can lift our eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh our help. Someone preach with me. Our help cometh from the Lord. Who created heaven and earth. Isn't it like the enemy to wait till we're down to our last and then try to afflict us? Oh my God. Hallelujah. But I'm thankful that those who dwell in the secret place. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Pastor, thank you for that reminder yesterday. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Scripture shows us at least two times that Jesus passed through Jericho when he cured the two blind men and that's in Mark chapter 10 verse 46 and when he converted Zacchaeus the tax collector that's in Luke chapter 19 from verse 1 to 10 so this is why we don't have to fear because Jesus passed the same roads that we're passing Amen. not only did he pass the same roads that we passed through but he's been through he's been tempted in every way just like how we've been tempted so we don't have to worry because he's touched with the very feeling of our infirmities. Amen. And we still don't have to worry because we learn through, amen, that the Holy Spirit is our parakletos, the one who walks with us. So tell somebody, I'm never alone. Hallelujah. I can walk down any street because I'm never alone. Ah, the Holy Spirit walks with me. I don't have to walk in fear. I don't have to fear man that can touch my body. Hallelujah. But the scripture says, in order to fear God instead, who can touch the body and the soul. So I don't have to worry. Tell somebody, I don't have to worry. I don't have to be afraid because he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Oh, somebody tell somebody, fear not. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're living in a time when the enemy wants us to fear everything. He wants us to be afraid to leave our homes. He wants us to be afraid to leave our children. But tell somebody, I will fear not. Hey, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm reminded of Psalm 91 as I'm talking. Don't be afraid of the arrow that flies by day. Oh, don't be afraid of the arrow that flies by night. Know that the Lord, his wings is covering. Hallelujah, Jesus. He is covering us. Amen. Hallelujah. The next person that Jesus introduced into his story is a priest. He spends no time describing the priest and only tells of how he showed no love or compassion for the man. By failing to help him, but by passing on to the other side of the road as to not get involved. If there's anyone that should have helped this man, it should have been the priest. Because I'm understanding that when God calls you, when he ordains you, when he sets you apart, it is to serve. Amen, somebody. It's not just to put on the outfit. It's not just to put on the collar and look handsome or look pretty. But we got a work to do. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't know if there's anyone that knows that you have a calling on your life. Let me tell you something. That calling is to serve others. Amen, somebody. That calling is to pray for others. Because my Bible tells me that when I pray for others, that my very prayers will be answered. 
Is there anyone that has a desire for those, hallelujah, who are lost? By the nature of his position, he was to be a person of compassion, desiring to help others. Unfortunately, love was not a word for him that required action on the behalf of someone else. The next person to pass by in the parable of the Good Samaritan is a Levite. And he does exactly what the priest did. He passes by without showing any compassion. Again, he would have known the law, but he also failed to show the injured man compassion. Ah, but the next person to come by is the Samaritan. The one least likely to have shown compassion for the man. Samaritans were considered a low class of people by the Jews. Since they had intermarried with non-Jews and they did not keep all the law. Therefore, Jews would have nothing to do with them. When Jesus met the woman at the well in John chapter 14 verse 9, she said to him, Then said the woman to Samaria, How is it that thou being a Jew... Ask it drink of me, which am I a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And this is what she said to Jesus, amen? But Jesus offered her water, the living water. He said, if you drink of me, you shall not thirst anymore. Anyone drank of that water before? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Anyone drank from that fountain before? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. See, Jesus was messing things up right here. Because there's people that's even sitting here right now, and you're not dealing with someone. But Jesus said, we have to love. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus said, we have to love. Amen. Hallelujah. Love covers a multitude of sins. Hallelujah. Even when someone despitefully uses us. The Bible says that we ought to pray for them. Yes. Hallelujah. I know you cursed them out last week, but the Bible says you have to pray for them. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Ah, and Jesus gave us the greatest example. You know what he said? Even after they afflicted him, even after they beat him with the cat of nine tails, even when they nailed him to the cross, uh, when they pit, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I want you to know that because you have the word of God, you also have the wisdom of God. So because you have the wisdom of God, you realize that the person who's attacking you doesn't know who they're attacking. You realize that they don't know that God said, do not touch my, the Lord's anointed, nor do my prophet no harm. So because you have that wisdom, you also have a duty to pray for that person. Because if you don't pray for that person, they might not receive uh, Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know that anyone that doesn't receive Jesus, where their portion will be. Ah, I want somebody to know that we have a responsibility with the wisdom that we have. We have a responsibility with the love that we have. Amen, somebody. We have to share it. Hallelujah. We have to love unconditionally. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We have to love, hallelujah, the way that God commanded us to love, hallelujah. Oh, is there anyone that has never done something, that has never hurt someone, that has, that has lived righteously before God their entire life? So if God can forgive us, then we also have a duty. Ah, thank you, Jesus, to forgive somebody. Someone say, like a good neighbor, I am here. Hallelujah, blessed be the name of Jesus. Because the good man was a Samaritan, Jesus is drawing a strong contrast between those who knew the law and those who actually followed the law in their lifestyle and conduct. Jesus now asks the lawyer if he can apply the lesson to his own life with this question. He says to him, so which of these three do you think was the neighbor to him that fell amongst the thieves? Once again, the lawyer's answering is telling of his personal hardness of heart. Hallelujah. He cannot bring himself to say the word Samaritan. 
He refers to the good man who has shown mercy. His hate for the Samaritans, his neighbors, was so strong that he could not even refer to them in the proper way. Jesus then tells the lawyer to go and do likewise, meaning that he should start living what the law tells him to do. Hallelujah. There's someone here that your heart is hard towards someone. And I want you to know, amen, that when our heart is in that condition, ain't nothing that we're saying to God he's hearing. Hallelujah, because the Bible says when I withhold iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Can I teach? Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, amen, that we have to ask God for forgiveness. And we also have to forgive them. Ah, oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Does anyone want their prayers to be hindered? Does anyone want their prayers to be held up? We got to give it to God. Just tell somebody, give it over to God. Hallelujah. There's someone here this morning that is still hating their parents uh, because some things that they did in your rearing and growing up. There's someone here that is still hating their brother or sister because the way uh, that they treated them. But you got to give that over to God this morning. Uh, hallelujah. There's someone here this morning that's still holding uh, President Caesar. Hallelujah. Some of us don't like white people. Hallelujah. But we got to give that over to We got to give it over to God. Hallelujah. Just because uh, one person did something doesn't mean an entire race of people. Do you know that there are white people that are good? Yes. Hallelujah. Do you know that there are Asian people that are good? Yes. Do you know that there are Jewish people that are good? So why then are we holding these stereotypes in our heart? Give it over to God. God has commanded us to love our neighbor. And when we don't love them in that way, we will not witness to them. And if we do not witness to them, then we're not carrying out what God has called us to do. Tell somebody, put aside the differences. Put aside uh, the differences. Uh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. By ending the encounter in this matter, Jesus is telling us to follow the Samaritan's example in our own conduct. We are to show compassion and love for those we encounter in our everyday activities. Tell somebody every day. We are to love others regardless of their race or even their religion. Ah, hallelujah. We're living in a time, and I see it even in my own school that I work, where children five to 10 years old are already trying to beat up the Muslim children. Hallelujah. Where are they getting this hatred from? They're getting it from the example that we're showing as adults. Excluding people. Do you know that Christ came for everyone? No matter religion. God can open up a door for us to minister onto them. If there's something in our heart that tells us every Muslim person that we see is a terrorist, we have to give that over to God. Amen, somebody. Because that's fear, and God did not give us the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying we have to put aside these differences. The Lord is saying we have to know who our neighbor is. It's not just those who are in the church, but it's those who we encounter every day. Hallelujah. Does someone know that I am a good neighbor? Hallelujah, Jesus. If they need and we have the supply, then we ought to give generously and freely without even expectation of return. This is an impossible obligation for that lawyer and for us. We cannot always keep the law because of our human condition. Hallelujah. Our heart and desires are mostly self and selfishness. Is there anybody like that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we are left to our own, we do the wrong thing, failing to meet the law. We can hope that the lawyer saw this and came to the realization that there was nothing he could do to justify himself. For this, he needed the Savior to atone for his lack of ability to save himself, even from his own sins. What am I saying? There's nothing that is in us that can do it alone. Hallelujah. 
And that's why we need Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit working in our lives because the Holy Spirit bears the fruit. And one of those attributes of the fruit is love. Ah, hallelujah. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't love all of God's people. Hallelujah. And this is why the law itself was imperfect. But we are thankful that Jesus came to fulfill that which was imperfect. Now we can love. Tell somebody, I can love. Hallelujah. The way that Jesus shows me how to love. Thus the lessons of this parable of the Good Samaritan are threefold. We are to set aside all prejudices and show love and compassion for others. Just because they have better clothes than you doesn't mean you can't witness to them. Our neighbor is anyone that we encounter. We are all creatures of the creator. We are to love all of mankind as Jesus taught. Keeping the law in its entirety with the intent to save ourselves is an impossible task. We need Jesus. Tell somebody we need Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to go back up to verse 34 just for two minutes. Hallelujah. It says, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn. Everyone say inn. And took care of him. I just want to focus on the word in. This man was in such a wounded, beaded condition that he required hospital hospitalization. Sometimes, amen, we self-treat ourselves, amen. Uh, the condition might not be so bad, amen. Hallelujah. I remember growing up, amen, there was a joke about Robotessin. Hallelujah. Amen. It will heal everything, right, Pastor? If you had a headache, take Robotessin. If you had a cough, take Robotessin. If you broke your leg, take Robotessin. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. There was just a running joke about that. But how many know that there's some issues that require hospitalization? Amen. We are thankful, hallelujah, to God that this good Samaritan it didn't tell us that if he was a, a doctor of his own or if he knew any medical procedure, but he knew where to take him. Amen. Today we have so many hospitals in our local areas and we can choose even where we want to go to receive treatment. I've never seen something like this. The ambulance will come and pick you up and then they'll ask you, where do you want to go? Uh, Isn't that something? Yeah. Hallelujah. Doctors even specialize in different areas of the body. If I have a, cardi um, a cardiology issue <coughs> dealing with the heart, I would go to New York Presbyterian who was ranked first in New York City for cardiology care. If I had a problem with my back, I would go to NYU Langhorne Medical Center, which is ranked first for orthopedic care. If I had a problem with diabetes, I would go to Montefiore, which is ranked um, high in hospital for diabetes care. But what then if my problem isn't physical? What then if it's spiritual, such as sin? Is there somewhere I can go is there a general hospital that takes care of that issue? Ah, Jesus, hallelujah. Is there a well-known physician? Does anyone know of one that's only able to deal with these conditions uh, such as sin? Hallelujah. Jesus said in his own words, those who are well don't need a doctor. But those who are sick, Luke 19.10 says, uh, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save those who are lost. Uh, uh, we see it time and time in scripture, even the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, she went to the hospital, she went to the physicians, uh, but no one was able to cure her of her condition. Uh, ah, she needed to go to a specialist. Uh, and I'm here to tell someone this morning, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, there is uh, a specialist uh, who specializes in the wounded state that sin leaves man in. Uh, ah, Jesus, hallelujah. And if I knew where to find them, John the Baptist told us, he said, Behold, there comes uh, the Lamb of God who is to take away uh, the sins of the world. So John the Baptist was able to point him out. Uh, is there anyone that can point him out this morning? Uh, because maybe you are like me and was once suffering. Uh, 
from this sin condition uh, that no doctor could heal. Uh, is there anyone that was once like me uh, who was in a state because the Bible says uh, that the wages of sin is death. Uh, is there anyone that was dying from that condition? Uh, but you came to the general hospital. You came to see a man named Jesus uh, who took that sin away. I know. Is there anybody that would give God a praise? Uh, that there's a specialist in the house. Uh, he doesn't only specialize uh, in taking care of sin, uh, but he specializes uh, in those areas that doctors can't touch uh, because he himself uh, is the great physician. Uh, when doctors throw their hands up and say there's nothing uh, I can't do, uh, some would tell you, uh, but I know a man uh, that's able to Anyone know that man that's able to heal every condition? That's able to heal every disease? That's able to heal every sickness? I want you to know, hallelujah, the Lord put this word on my heart last week. Hallelujah. Pastor called and gave me the assignment. From the time God put the word on my heart, I saw affliction take place. I saw my children afflicted. I said there's a general hospital. Even in my own body, I couldn't get up this morning to come. But I said, devil, you are a liar. I have to deliver the word of God. Is there anybody that knows huh, that there's a great physician huh, that's able to heal every? I didn't have enough time to go to the doctor this morning. But I said I have an appointment somewhere else. And I believe that in this appointment, even while I'm ministering the word of God, that healing is going to come over me. Hey, Jesus. Somebody stand on your feet right now and give God a praise. Give him a praise for healing you from your sin. Hey! From healing you from every sickness, from every wound, from every brokenness. Somebody get to give them a better praise than that. If you understand that you are that person that was left in that wounded condition, Within an inch of your life. But Jesus came by. And he poured in the oil. He poured in the oil. And the wine. Hey! Can I say oil is for gladness? Jesus, he has made me glad. I will rejoice. For he has made me glad. Thank you, Pastor. That oil is also for covering. Hey, Jesus. Cover up every area of my life. That wine cures infection. Hallelujah. I want you to know that you were infected before. But when he poured in that wine, that infection was healed. Hey, Jesus. Sin no longer has hold over you. Who the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. See, the devil don't want you to know you're free. But any man that is in Christ Jesus, he is free. And he is a new creature. You don't have to go back into that life. You don't have to. He has set you free. Come into the house of God. Establish your relationship with him. Read his word. Surround yourself with good people. Encourage 
yourself in the Lord. He is able. Anyone know he's able this morning? He's able this morning. He's able. Hallelujah. In closing, I want you to know that we have a requirement to be that good neighbor. Hallelujah. Every time I hear that State Farm commercial, like a good neighbor, State Farm is here. I said, State Farm shouldn't be taking this much credit. Hallelujah. That's a lot of credit. Amen. Hallelujah. But we ought to be that neighbor. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Is there anyone here this morning that's in a wounded state? Hallelujah. You're in a state where you feel that you're within an inch of your life. Hallelujah. Troubles and burdens and worries are weighing you down. You don't know what to do. You call for help, but people just pass you by. Hallelujah. The Lord said, call upon me and I will answer. I thank God, Pastor, that somebody's listening. Hallelujah, Jesus. Someone is listening. If that's you this morning, I want you to make your way to the altar because we all need strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Is there anyone else that needs strength? Hallelujah. Is there anyone that is having difficulty finding the strength to love someone who has hurt you? You're asking God, help you to forgive. I want you to come to the altar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You don't want that unforgiveness to be a hindrance. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your son and for your daughter. Lord, they have come before you today. You have spoken to their hearts. You have spoken to their mind. And Father, Lord, they need you. Lord, you said, cast your cares upon you for you care it for us. We thank you, Lord, that you are our great physician, our great healer. We thank you, God, that you have first taken away, oh God, sin, healed us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, oh Lord, that you have come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Father, I ask for strength for them right now. Your word declares, as thy day is, so shall thy strength be. Father, you have given us strength for today. And with the strength that you have given us, oh God, we're going to praise you and give you what is due unto you. Father, I thank you for healing every situation in their life, every broken place for touching their family right now. Ah, Jesus, hallelujah. For turning situations around. You have declared to them, fear not, for I am with you. Lord, help them to know that somebody's listening, and that's you. Hallelujah. That you have heard their cry. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We declare over their life that the best is yet to come. Hallelujah believe it's going to be all right. In the name of Jesus. Everyone just lift your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. All over his house this morning. Come on. Lift your hands and give him praise this morning. All over his house. Hallelujah. Tell him I thank you. Hallelujah for your word. I thank you for your strength. I thank you for your love. In Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. May God continue to bless you. Put the 